Hey Trojans, happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, December 19th, uh, and we're joining each other here in a virtual lesson today. Um, since it is an asynchronous or independent day, um, it's a great day for you to be able to work at your own pace. Um, choose what subject you want to work on first. Make sure you're attending any small groups or one-on-one -on -one groups you may have today with any of your teachers. Um, but we've got some stuff going on in math today. As we talked about on Friday during our live or recorded synchronous classes, um, today we're going to watch a video lesson. Uh, we're changing it up a little bit today. Keep us from reading the FLVS textbook. So we're going to watch this recorded lesson. Um, in this recorded lesson, we're going to be talking about expanded form of decimals. Um, and then we are going to, throughout this recorded lesson, we're going to have some practice problems. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. And we are also going to have some um, things for you to do on your own or with us all together. So we'll be taking some notes. We'll have some practice problems. Uh, we'll go over some practice problem answers. And then we'll have an exit ticket. Sound good? Awesome. All right, so I'm going to split myself over here so you can see me. I think it is right there. Awesome. There we go. Before we begin, in order to succeed on our exit ticket, there are going to be five questions that we're going to have throughout our time today. Um, so grab a piece of paper or a post-it note or something or write where you are in your math notebook. Um, start with exit ticket at the top. That way you know when you come to your exit ticket later, you're going to have all your five answers ready to go. They're going to come through from throughout today's video. Um, so number one, two, three, four, and five. As we work through the video today, um, I will be giving you some practice problems that I'll say this is exit ticket problem one or exit ticket problem two. I will also label them. You don't have to write this off to the side, but this is how I will label them in our work. Exit ticket ET1 or ET2, ET3, four, or five. Awesome. So make sure you've got your piece of paper ready to go, or your post-it note, or somewhere that you can write down your five exit ticket problem solutions. They'll be throughout the video. And let's go. This, since some of y'all are not used to watching these recorded lessons, uh, one of the great things about them, as many of you guys know, is that you can pause the video wherever, whenever you want. Um, so if I'm going too fast, you're writing down some notes, you need to go get a piece of paper. You can pause it and jump back in whenever you get back. Um, so get ready to take some notes with us. We're going to be talking about expanded form today. Now I want to start us off with my favorite number of the time right now, 1,234 and 567 thousandths. Okay, so now that we've got my favorite number here, I want you to label each of those place values. So label what this, the one is, the two is, the three is, the four is, the five is, the six is, the seven is. Label what those, what each of those place values are, and that's just going to help us review those. So go ahead and label those. Pause the video, unpause when you've got them labeled, and then check your work with me. Awesome. So this is the same number we used on our notes last week. I think it was last week or the week before. So going from left to right, we have the thousands the hundreds, the tens, the ones, our decimal place, the tenths, the hundredths, and the thousandths. We remember that our ones and our decimal places act as a mirror, so then everything reflects over that mirror right there. We've got our tens and our tenths. I'm gonna make this into a box so it looks more like a mirror. Our hundreds and our hundredths, and our thousands and our thousandths. Just another thing that we remember, because I know y'all are so awesome, you remember this. On the left side of the decimal place, all of our words end in S, because that represents a whole number. You have your thousands. That's how many groups of a thousand are there. Your hundreds, which are how many groups of a hundred are there. Your tens, which is saying how many groups of tens are there. And then your ones, saying how many single units are there. <laughs> but then on the right side, we've got... THS as the end of each of our words, and that's because THS represents a fraction. So if we have a tenth, one tenth, that would say, hey, one of a ten of something. 
one tenth of something. So these are fractions on the right side. Hundredths are one hundredth. That's saying one piece of a whole. And thousands is one piece, one even smaller piece of an even bigger whole. Okay. The other thing we want to know is as we go right to left, each of these gets multiplied by 10. So 1,000th times 10 is a hundredth. 100th times 10 is a tenth. One ten tenths is a one, right? Because if we split a one, one unit into 10 pieces, we end up with tenths. Then one times 10 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So as we move right to left, we multiply by 10. And the exact opposite is true as well. If we move from left to right, we divide each one by 10. So 1,000 divided by 10 is 100. 100 divided by 10 is a 10. 10 divided by 10, as you know, is 1. If we split one unit into 10 pieces, we end up with 10 tenths. So we got tenths. If we divide a tenth, which is part of a whole, into even more parts, we end up with 100 pieces. So we have hundredths. And we divide hundredths by 10, we get thousandths. So as we move right to left, we multiply by 10. Left to right, we divide by 10. Okay. But today we're talking about expanded form. And what expanded form is just is going to do is going to help us just visualize what each of these numbers represents and help us get our place value down. Um, it's also going to help us compare decimals like we started to do on um, Friday and we're going to continue to do on Thursday. Um, and it's another way. On Friday, we looked at matching up our decimal place and then comparing from left to right. Um, definitely a very great way to do it. And, and easy to do in your head as well because you'll be able to visualize those two decimals lined up. Um, but starting on Thursday, we're going to learn some other methods to compare our decimals. So one of them is going to help us by looking at expanded form. So before we begin with expanded form of decimals, we're going to look at the expanded form of a whole number. So that whole number I just took right from our number above, 234. So as we do expanded form, we're going to multiply by each of the place values. So the 4 is 1s, the 3 is 10s, and the 2 is 100s. So we're going to line each of our, or sorry, we're going to break apart our number into each digit. So we got our 2, our 3, and our 4. And then we're going to write it out as that digit multiplied by the place value it's in. So the 2 is in the hundreds place. So we're going to multiply 2 times 100. Okay. Then we have 3 times 10. Then we have 4 times 1 because 4 is in the 1's place. 3 times 10 because 3 is in the 10's place. You may also see another form of expanded form like this. 200 plus 30 plus 4. We have just simplified each of those multiplication problems into the number they are. You will also absolutely see this written out as 200 plus 30 plus 4. We can write these out in words as well. Um, definitely not something we'll be doing a lot in class, um, but you may see it time to time. Uh, I know we saw it on a quiz last week. Um, yeah, so we may see this from time to time with words instead of numbers. Um, same thing, we expand it out into each place value. We got two hundreds, 30 because that is our tens place and then four in our ones place. Awesome. All right. I'm going to give you an example to do. And then we're going to move on to the decimal side of things. All right. So our example is going to be 500C 
61. All right, you go ahead and break that out into expanded form. Pause it here. We'll jump back in as soon as you are done. Awesome. So hopefully you have expanded this, and we will check your work with me. We are going to expand this. We are going to ask our 5 is in the hundreds place. So we're going to start with our something times 100. Then the next place value we have is 10. And the last place value is times 1. So I know that we're going to multiply something times 100, something times 10, and something times 1. Well, our 5 is in the hundreds place. So we go 1s, 10s, hundreds. So we have 5 times 100. Then we have 6 times 10 because 6 is in the tens place. And then we have 1 times 1 because 1 is in the ones place. There we are in our expanded form. We add our plus signs between them because we have 5 times 100 plus 6 times 10 plus 1 times 1. If we want to condense that into a um, where we have solved each of the multiplication expressions, we would do 500 plus 60 because 6 times 10 is 60 plus 1 times 1 is 1. And as you can check your work, 500 plus 60 plus 1 does equal 561, so we are good to go. We are also going to write this one out, uh, just so we have it in words as well. 561. All right, so time for your first exit ticket problem. So get your exit ticket paper ready. I'm gonna spin mine sideways so we are good to go. I'm gonna label this exit ticket one. Remember this problem right here will be the first answer to your exit ticket. And then write this in expanded form. Again, I just, need your answer for this. You don't need to put the question or your work in our exit ticket, but write in expanded form. <laughs> 472. So put that, that will be your first exit ticket answer. It is 472 in expanded form. All right, solve that, write that down on your exit ticket sheet and then we'll put that into the form at the end. Awesome. Feel free to rewind it if you need to go back and check. Um, but we are going to now look at expanded form on the decimal side. So, just on the decimal side, we're gonna start with a number that has zero ones just to make our lives a little simpler to start. And our number is going to be 567. All right. So we are going to do the same exact thing. But first we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, the decimal place is right here. So that means zero is in the ones place. I'm gonna zoom in just a smidge, there we go. So the five is in the tenths place. That's our first digit. It is in the tenths place. So we will put a one tenth there. So then the sixth is in the hundredths place. And we write that one one hundredth. And then the seven is in the one thousandths place. And then we'll split those apart. The five is in the tens place. So you do five times one tenth plus the six is in the hundredths place. So you do six times one hundredth. And then the seventh is in the thousandths place. So we're going to add that. Do seven times <coughs> one thousandth. Now, since we've already talked about multiplying fractions, we know in order to multiply fractions, we've got to put a one under each of these digits. So we would have five over one times one over 10 plus six over one times one over 100 plus 
7 over 1 times 1 over 1,000. Right, I'm going to pause this here before we solve each of those parts and put it together. And then we will get ready to go. Sorry, I moved up a little too fast. All right, so I know that you could solve these to get a simplified um, version of expanded form. Five times one is five. We're just multiplying our fraction straight across the top, straight across the bottom. One times 10 is 10. So you have five tenths. Then we have six times one is six. One times 100 is 100, so six hundredths. And we have 7 times 1 is 7, and 1 times 1,000 is 1,000. So we have 7 thousandths. <laughs> so hopefully this right here is showing you how, um, um, what each of these place values represents in terms of fractions. So we have the tenths place is one tenth of a whole, the hundredths place is one hundredth of a whole, and a thousandths place is one thousandth of a whole. All right, I'm going to give you one of these to try on your own, and that number is going to be 0 0.392. All right, try that one on your own. Oh, I am clearly out of the page. There we go. Try that one on your own, and then we'll get back together and check our work. All right, so just like before, we have three place values. We have one in the tenths place, one in the hundredths place, and one in the thousandths place. <coughs> now we're just gonna plug and play these, drop each one in. We have three in the tenths place, so we're gonna do three times one tenth. We have a nine in the hundredth place, so we're going to do nine times one tenth. And then we have a two in the thousandth place, so we're going to do two times one tenth. Now we know once we have all those solved, we'll just add a, an addition sign in the middle, and then we'll be good to go. And if we were going to do the condensed expanded form or to solve each of those multiplication problems, we could absolutely do that. Do 3 times 1 tenth. We know we'd have to convert that into 3 over 1 times 1 tenth. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 10 is 10. We'd turn that 9 into a fraction by putting in 1 as the denominator because 9 is the same thing as 9 wholes or 9 over 1. Times 1 over 100. Then I know 9 times 1 is 9, 1 times 100 is 100. We'll do the same thing in the thousands place. We know we have to turn that 2 into a fraction by putting a 1 on the bottom because again that 2 is representing 2 holes and a hole is 1 so we put 2 over 1 times 1 over 1000. 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 1000 is 1000. There is our condensed expanded form once we've solved it. When we're doing um, most of our expanded form, we're going to stay, stick with that top method or that top model. I just want to show everybody everything all together. All right, it is time for your second exit ticket question. Exit ticket number two. Sorry, that is ET, not EX. ET2, write the expanded form of this decimal. Zero point four one six. There you go. So solve that one on your own. Um, submit it as part of your exit ticket. It's exit ticket question number two.
All right, once you've got that exit ticket problem solved, we're going to go into a number that has a whole number and also a decimal place. I'm excited for that. Whole number and a decimal place. Okay, and here is our number we will start with. Just drop my pen, I'll be right back. There we go. 25.16. Now you notice we haven't used all the place values, right? There's nothing in the hundreds place or the thousands place, and there's nothing over here in the thousands place. So that means nothing is going to change. I just wanted to point that out. Um, we only have number digits or numbers in the tens place, the ones place, and the tenths place, and the hundredths place. Okay, so we want to break this apart into our expanded form. So the first place value we have is the tens place. The second place value, the fives in the ones place. Sorry, the five, yeah, the fives in the ones place. Then the one here is in the tenths place. Then the six is in the hundredths place. We don't have to add in any additional place values because we only have those four places. Um, and then we will be good to go. And just like we did with the whole number or just the decimal, we'll drop our digit in the tens place next to our 10, our digit in our fives place next to the one, sorry, the digit in the ones place next to the one is the five. Um, remember, we just add, put an addition sign in the middle there uh, because we're adding them together, grouping them back together to get back to our number at the top. Our number in the tenths place is the one, so we're dropping that right next to where it says one tenth. And then we're dropping our six next to the hundreds place, which is one over 100, we have six. All right, so let's take a look at this. I'm gonna rewrite this just below. You don't have to if yours came out neater than mine. We have two times 10 plus five times one plus one times one tenth, plus six times one one hundred. Now, when we're there, we could absolutely put this back into condensed form if we wanted to, or condensed expanded form if we want to. Um, we're not gonna do that um, all together, but I'll show you how if we wanted to. We're gonna do two times 10 is 20 plus five times one is five, plus one times one tenth is one tenth, plus six times one hundredth is six hundredths. Uh, we may talk about that a little bit in a live or synchronous class, but since today is an asynchronous class and everybody's watching this video all together, we're not going to do this step all together. We're gonna stop it with this one. Awesome, all right. So, where do we go next? I'm going to give us three practice problems to work on, and then we will do them all together. Oh, wrong way there. Let's zoom out so we can see everything all at once. This first one, we're going to have a number in the hundreds, hundreds place. The second one is going to be a challenge because it will have a number in the thousandths place. And then the third one is going to be the third exit ticket question. And oh, I'm gonna zoom out. So actually, you should have that already up there. So I'm gonna zoom in and we can see these three. All right, take some time, look at these three questions, 
Um, and then I'll go over one and two, and number three is for your exit ticket. Uh, so solve these three problems. Um, unpa pause the video, solve these three problems, unpause it when you're good to go, and check your work with me. Awesome. All right, I'm going to expand these out. I know number one is four times 100 plus three times 10 plus two times one plus five times one tenth plus nine times one hundred. Because our four is in the hundreds place, the three is in the tens place, the two is in the ones place, the five is in the tenths place, and the nine is in the hundredths place. All right, now let's take a look at number two. We have two is in the tens place, so it's two times 10 plus the one is in the ones place, one times one, plus this first six is in the tenths place, so it's six times one tenth. Then we have seven hundredths, so we have seven times one hundredth. Then we have a six in the thousandths place, so it's six times one one thousandth. All right, exit ticket three is all on your own to solve this. Uh, and put it in your exit ticket. And that will be all of our notes for today. We're just working through these processes all together into expanded form. Um, and then I'll give you the last two exit ticket problems. All right, our last two exit ticket problems are going to say just comparing some decimals. Um, just like we did on Friday. Just ask which is greater. So exit ticket four, ET4. 37 point three seven nine or thirty seven point three eight. And then we have exit ticket five right here. All right, there are your two last exit ticket problems, exit ticket four and exit ticket five. So you now have all five exit ticket problems from throughout today. Um, that is it for today. As always, feel free to jump in to our help session if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all. Uh, Ms. Hayden and I will be there from 9 to 12, and then from 12.45 to 3.30. We hope to see you there. Uh, Y'all are amazing. Um, one more thing, if your browser did not work for Map, when we try to get to that login screen on Friday, please come see us uh, so we can get that fixed for you today so tomorrow is seamless. Awesome. Bye, y'all. Have an amazing day, and I will see y'all uh, tomorrow if I don't see you today. Uh, remember, we are map testing tomorrow, so I might not actually see you tomorrow unless you're in my homeroom. Um, but I'll see you when I see you. You all have an amazing day, um, and I will see you whenever, feel free to drop in and say hello. Y'all are amazing. Bye, y'all.